Now for this last part then, what we need to do is look at the particle B's motion. We know that it started at rest and it accelerated upwards at 1.4 meters per second per second. We got that from the last part of the question. And after half a second, it's going to be up to, say, a point up here somewhere. Okay, we just mark it in there. We'll say that this is when t equals 0 0.5 of a second. All right. Now, we know the string breaks at this point, and then the particle b is going to then move freely under gravity up into the air and then come back down again. So it comes in two parts, this question. What we need to establish though before we move into the motion freely under gravity is that we need to establish this velocity here. Okay, we'll call it V, V meters per second. And we also need to establish how high it's risen. We'll call that H meters. Okay, so just pop that in there, H meters. So to do this first part then, to get h and v, we need to consider a SUVAD equation, S, U, V, A and T. And we're going to take upwards as positive because it's moving in that direction. So what's S going to be? Well, it's going to be h meters. All right, U, the initial velocity, well, that was zero zero meters per second. We want to find out what V is. We know the acceleration, it's plus 1.4 meters per second per second. And we know the time. It took half a second to go from here to here. So 0 0.5 seconds. Now, what equation can we use to get V? Well, it'd be v equals u plus at. So if we were to use v equals u plus at, we can get v as being equal to u, which we know is 0. So it's just going to be a times t. 1.4 then multiplied by 0 0.5. And that's 0 0.7. 0 0.7 meters per second. So we know that the particle B now is moving at 0.7 meters per second when the string breaks. How high does it rise though? Well, we can get that by using S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S is going to be H. U we know is zero, so that takes out the whole of that term. So we're left with a half AT squared. So it'd be a half multiplied by the acceleration, 1.4 multiplied by T squared, 0.5 squared. And if you work that out, it comes to exactly 0.175. So that'd be 0.175 meters that B rises. Now, what happens after this then? Well, we know that the string breaks. So the particle B is going to just rise into the air a certain distance, stop for a moment, and then it's going to come all the way back down again to hit the ground. Now, to do this, we know that it's now moving freely under gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, which is now going to be downwards, okay, x downwards. We'll mark it in here, acceleration due to gravity, that's g, or 9.8 meters per second per second. Now, to get that uh, time it takes, what we need to do is again consider a SUVAT equation. So if we just start again, we'll, we'll just underline that section there. So for this next stage, if we think of S, U, V, A and T. Now the particle is initially moving upwards here, so I'm going to still have upwards as positive. But this is where we've got to take care. Because remember, S is displacement. And the particle went up here, 
if we take this as zero the level of um, where we start it goes up here in the positive sense comes back down hits the ground here so from here down to here is a distance of 1 plus the 0.175 in other words 1.175 meters but although the particle went up here and then back down its displacement from here is minus 1.175 meters that's a bit I think you've got to take care over now we know u u is the v value here which we said earlier was 0.7 meters per second that's going upwards in the positive sense v well we're not interested in the final velocity down here but we do know that the acceleration is minus 9.8 okay even though it goes up and then back down it's 9.8 in the opposite sense to this so the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second per second and t is what we're trying to find so what equation would we use for something like this well again it's got to be s equals ut plus a half a t squared so s is going to be the minus 1.175 now we haven't got much room in here so we're going to come down here now we'll just say that minus 1.175 for s equals ut so we've got u which is 0 0.7 multiplied by t and then we've got plus a half times the acceleration which is minus 9.8 and that's multiplied by t squared so we have a quadratic equation not a nice one I must admit but we need to rearrange this this is half of minus 9.8 is minus 4.9 t squared so if I was to rearrange this we would therefore have 4.9 t squared if I add that, added that to both sides then we'll have minus 0.7 t and then minus 1.175 and that equals zero so in order to solve this I can't see this factorizing so what I'd want to use is my quadratic formula remember that if you've got a quadratic equation of the form a t squared plus b t minus oh, I shouldn't say minus plus c equals zero then t equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a the quadratic formula normally it's in x but I've had to change it to t so if we work out what t is through the formula t will equal minus b so that will be 0 0.7 plus or minus the square root of b squared so that's minus 0 0.7 make sure that's in brackets minus 0 0.7 all squared minus 4 times the a value which is 4.9 times the c value which is minus 1.175 okay and all of that is divided by 2a so that'd be 2 multiplied by 4.9 now there's going to be two answers here I'll leave you to work them out if you take the negative version you'll end up with t being a negative number well t's got to be positive and so if you take the positive version you actually get what t is it turns out that t will come down through here okay it turns out that t equals 0 0.5663 and so on the negative value of t turns out to be minus 0 0.4234 and so on but since t has got to be greater than zero then we'll take this one up here and we'll round it say to three significant figures so since t has got to be greater than zero t equals 0 0.566 to three significant figures okay 
So I hope that's given you some idea then how to do a question like this. All right.